Charlie. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, look at this. It's beautiful. <laughs> this is recovery in the house. In the house for the last time. Yeah, we're moving house. We're, we're getting kicked out. Yeah, we got it. Our work's on full house every time the girl speaks. I know. What happened? Our lease ran out, and we, we're getting kicked out into the street. You have to find a new place to do recovery. Yeah, so we'll be relocating. But it doesn't matter anyway, because we've got a good show today. We've got an exclusive interview with the Living End. No one else has got the Living End. I don't want to custard? talk to anyone, I don't want to see anyone. Custard. We can force breakers, who you just saw at the start of the show, break dancing around. Either. They'll be coming in. Judith Lucy's going to make us laugh. Yeah, Bruce Woo! Van Fiss is coming in. Actor Helen Neville from the new Australian film Sally Marshall is not an alien. We've got act <laughs> actors from Sea Chain. Oh, uh, yeah, we got. Uh, did the you mention the Stuff Art guy? Did you already do that, Ian uh, Anderson? We got Custard. We've got uh, crazy uh, snowboarding maniacs uh, Tim Fox and, and Nigel McIntosh. The Blink winner? Yeah, the winner of the uh, fabulous Blink-182 competition. And exclusive behind-the-scenes <laughs> silver chair footage. Yes, of them on tour. And also exclusive clips that clips. no one else has. New it, clips. Well, are they exclusive or are they just new? No, they're new. OK, they're just new. They're... We haven't played them before. We, we've got so. the living end all to ourselves, but the clips, other people have them. Yes. They're shared. Including they're... one that's directed by someone very special. Oh, very special. Now, what's happening? We'll see that later. Um, we've got Kate, our work experience person, to throw to our first clip. Oh, yeah. Kate. So here's Groove Amada with If Everybody Looked the Same. could well be the world's first hip-hop musical. It was started by a female rapper from Melbourne, Kate Armstrong. She decided to put together this musical with over uh, 60 uh, DJs, breakdancers and rappers on stage at the one time. Uh, it tells an actual narrative story, uh, like your average musical, only done in a hip-hop style. It's not Rent, but we've got them on anyway to explain it. Please welcome uh, the aforementioned Kate and two members of the cast, Christo from the Wicked Force Breakers and Gina Chrysanthopoulos. Yes. But I know that what I want is to know just exactly what I desire. So, 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 I keep it in mind to do what I know I want, then I can't go call myself a liar. When I keep going on and on and on and on like I do, I know that my rhymes are pathetic. No, no, because someone always comes up behind me, reminds me how I've got a great future. I'm prophetic. Keeping it up on top, my combination's so hot, you're burning the soles of your feet when you step out to rock. On the plea bar, plotting with Ferengi, lining up for a glimpse of the naked truth. Yeah, they say that it's for those who choose not to look up. Upon. Me and my mirror reflect your soul with my song Come on, slap your face, bring it on, what's wrong? Reality check has got you pondering Hippocratic oath, everywhere you look hypocrites More confusing than two ready breasts For feminists, reminisce, the person at 85 We survive another lesson, we're still alive Reminisce, the depression of 99 We survive another lesson, we're still alive Welcome, Kate <laughs> Please. Oh, thanks. <laughs> ah. wow. Very nice. So is that, a, is that from Bass Anger or yes, is that Freestyle? it is. That is it's, actually from... Oh, it's a combination of both. Nice. Yeah. So what is Bass Anger actually about, the okay. story of it? It's, um, the storyline is actually about, um, it's set in the future. You're it's right. set in 2030, right, 30 years from now. Basically, everything's privatised, right? <laughs> and everyone That's... lives in tribes, right? So the storyline is about how the tribes interact and how they relate with each other. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got about 60 people in the cast and the way they're relating is like, you know, they, the issues that come up is stuff like conflict and love stories and things like this, like nice. intertribal marriages and stuff like that. Right. And the issues that come up around that. So yeah, it's pretty nice. cool. So what persuaded you to do a hip hop musical? Um, about a year ago, I said to my friend, Hip hop musical, cool. <laughs> you just That'd came really out with cool. it. <laughs> because I was thinking at the time I was doing heaps of working in the hip hop scene and I was doing all these different stuff and I was thinking we need something that allows people to kind of express themselves more clearly. Because on stage in a musical in a storyline you, you can have to rap. Excuse the boom, by the way. You can rap. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but you can rap about. Sorry, in a in a theatrical production you can rap about stuff like. Um, anything you want and it's really clear, whereas right. when you're on stage, people can't really hear what you're saying. And all these rappers in Melbourne, because we're from Melbourne, were coming up with all these really intelligent raps, but you couldn't really hear what they were saying because of just the way the hip-hop scene already was, where you're on stage and you really... There was loud music and you really couldn't hear it right. properly. So in the theatrical way that we're doing it, you can really hear clearly what's going on. Yeah, but hip-hop music actually does lend itself to 
you know, a, a, a play, a musical form, because mm. it's it's so verbal. Like you can tell yep. a story. Do you guys yep. find that it's it's, much, it's really easy yeah. to tell the story? It's a story. It's storyline art. Yeah, you get to tell a story through your through your raps. Really? Yeah, and this has been able to develop more. Um, a lot of the people in the cast um, were able to develop a character with their story. So, like, you know, I've got a rap, like I was talking about, and I right. kind of rapped about feminism and stuff like that and other things. Um, I was able to create my character that developed that a bit further. So in the, in the show, I'm a character that's like this woman who goes around and says, you know, everyone be cool, you know, <laughs> enjoy yourself, that kind of stuff. Nice. Yeah. So, Christo and Gina, did you find it hard to adjust at first? I mean, it's not something the hip-hop community usually does a musical, was it kind of hard to get into? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> as easy as that. <laughs> so uh, who are you hoping to attract with it? I mean, are you hoping to attract um, non-hip-hop people or are you hoping to attract sort of the die-hard hip-hop fans or get a whole new audience along to someone who would usually go and see a musical but maybe not go and see Yeah, DJ all anymore? and everyone. Hip-hop scene definitely, um, because there definitely is a big underground hip-hop scene in all of the capital cities, you know, around. So, you know, it's growing and we really want to attract those people. But on top of that, anyone who's interested in um, what, you know, people our age have to say and what we want to, ex how we want to express ourselves and that kind of thing. Mm. And anyone who just wants to see like girls breaking for once because that's unusual. <laughs> right, which is, yeah. You know, that's one thing that's unusual. And even females rapping is an unusual is thing Is there a lot well. of females in the cast? We've got uh, about 60 or 70 percent cast members are female, which we particularly went for because a lot of, usually it's male dominated yeah. hip hop. Especially so with American something. hip hop and everything. Yeah. yeah, and we also want it to be Australian orientated as well, as, whatever that means. Yeah. So, <laughs> so basically we've got an Italian and a, a Greek Aboriginal here, <laughs> so that's Australian for us. So we basically just said to people, if you want to be in it, be in it. Right. We're, we're not auditioning, you can say whatever you want, you can do whatever you want. So we've got basically a mix of people. We've got you know, people who are 13 years yeah. old, two 12-year-old rappers who are really cute. Well, as far as you know, you know? Is, this a, is this a world first? I have a feeling they've done it in America before because I've seen it, you know, right. in, on videos and stuff like that, but I've never seen it in, in Australia. Nice. All right, can we please thank Gina, Christos, and Kate? You can check that out soon at Go Quick. Oh, Quick. North Melbourne Town Hall, um, 9th, 10th, and 11th of July. Excellent. Thank you again. Yay. Hey, well, first, a thousand clouds is an LA based sort of duo into the kind of hip hop, rock, folk crossover thing. They've just released their debut al album, Freelance Bubblehead, and this is the debut single off that album. I'm not the, oh, hang on, not the greatest rapper. Not, I'm not the greatest rapper, just not the greatest rapper. That's just the title. No, I'm just not. I'm not. Two thousand is an interactive competition that's on at the moment, and we're about to talk to the winner of Stuff Art ninety nine. Shake and bake, an audience. Let's give a clap to Ian Anderson. Flight was fun. From Brisbane. Brisbane, sunny Brisbane. Very sunny Brisbane, sunny and warm. Hello, everyone in Brisbane. It's nice and sunny and cold down here in Melbourne. Um, stuff art. Yeah. Please explain. Okay, stuff art's uh, sort of a competition held by, uh, funded by the Australian Film Commission, mm -hmm. along with ABC and people, and you can. Uh, applied to get a grant. Eight people won this year and eight people won last year, which was the first year it was run. Mm -hmm. And it's really good fun. You get given up to $5,000 to make something like this. Thing, like this? This is your masterpiece, Identikit. <laughs> Tell us, where did you get the idea for Identikit? Oh, uh, I was sitting around a couple of years ago at a going away party for a big round the world trip. Uh -huh. And there were the video camera and the computer and some friends. And we came up with this weird little concept and there's a an odd, sort of an odd version on old version on, on my website yeah I was playing and, with that the other ah, day okay. yeah and it was different because it's a bit separated yeah yeah it wasn't yeah. very good this one's you know this one's actually taken properly with real cameras and all these, are they your friends these are friends family and well-wishers yes who's that that's my mom oh, I was about to say it's the same jaw 
You can see. OK. Yeah, but... Uh, so you got the grant to put this together? Yeah. So yeah. do you need a lot of money to be a digital artist? Um, you don't really need a whole lot of money. You need access to computer gear. Just, I oh, don't know, enthusiasm and then the will to do something. But stuff on, I think, will give you all you need is a... It's just to, to start you going. It's a good to, foot in the door. Yeah, it's great foot in the door. How do you take steps to creating, though, on the computer? Because, like, I like to draw and stuff, yeah. but how do you do it on camera? I mean, on computer? On a computer? Um, they were all taken just with a standard camera. It's just a standard SLR camera, tripods and nice lights, and just scan them all in. Print them big, scan them in, correct them all, and then you get some nice photos. You can just shrink them all down, get good quality yeah. results. You can do it with just a video camera. Just and a normal one? Ordinary video camera. That's how the first one was done. That's why it doesn't look quite as nice. And I was reading about stuff art and it said about really pushing the concept as opposed to yeah. technology. Yeah, stuff art's um, got lots and lots of, well, the eight entries this year are all completely different from each other. Some are sound, some are more interactive than others, some are stories. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a really interesting uh, way to get lots of different art out there. And yeah. it, was, yeah, it was really great fun. So what do you reckon about the future of the internet and art, do you think like we'll be going to virtual galleries and things like that? Yeah, you already can. Yeah. Um, there's, there's loads of... Can you? <laughs> there's, there's loads of... Yeah, loads of loads of decent art on the net. It's, um, it means that even if you if you can't uh, get out there and get your stuff in a gallery, you can just put up your stuff online. It's, yeah, it's free, basically. Yeah. It's really good. Well, you can check out... Oh, there was Identikit. You can check out Identikit on Ian's personal homepage, which is... Ah, ooh. I've got it here if you... OK, well, that identical is at Stuff Art, which is uh, stuff-art.abc.net.au. Yeah. Uh, it should be at the bottom of your screen, I'm pretty sure. Alrighty. But if not, yeah, www.stuff-art.com.au. Um, oh. yeah. yeah, that'll probably work as well. And then you can see Ian, you can find out all about it. Thank you, Ian, for coming in. <laughs> are out with their second album. It's called Seven More Minutes and this is a single off the album called Getting By. visiting us after escaping from a lunatic asylum. They've escaped from the lunatic asylum and made their way down here to the house. Alert! They're actually taking part in this year's uh, World Heli Challenge, which is uh, an exclusive sort of ski and snowboarding event where basically they take a bunch of mental patients, fly them up to the top of a mountain and let them ski down. Well, they're not mental patients, but it is a crazy thing to do. So uh, we're going to welcome a couple of these people on, taking part in the competition, and ask them why. Why do it? Please put it together for Tim Fox and Nigel McKissick. Lee, how you going, mate? I just gave you guys the worst intro ever. <laughs> oh. I said, can you please um, put, put it together? <laughs> Nigel and Tim. It was really bad. Come on, man. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and put myself together. Just... <laughs> ah, it's better. Now, what is the difference between this event that you're about to go in and your regular, ordinary, run-of-the-mill ski snowboard competition? Well, I'd say fun, wouldn't you reckon? Oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Plus, it's, um, it's away from the resort. A lot of the 
normal competitions are sort of on the resort, so right. we get heli access, com uh, um, heli access terrain. So explain it, what, you, you get taken in a helicopter up to... The top of a peak. In Wanaka. Wanaka, New Zealand. It's actually about 50 of the best like snowboarders and skiers from all around the world just rock up. And so once the uh, hel uh, helicopter um, drops you off, then you just like stay there until the competition's over. <laughs> Up sort of on the top of this mountain. <laughs> no, we go up and down a lot. Like, um, there's three different days. First day is like a freestyle event where there's lots of natural terrain and right, yep. um, it's all jumps and, and tricks and stuff. The next day is um, an extreme day where it's like steep terrain and lots of cliffs and we go hucking. Right. And um, the third day is Chinese downhill. It's right. just like straighting it, straight lining it. Horse and to the you wall. guys have not been in the event before? Uh, well, I didn't go last year. I was in it the year before. Right. So it's pretty Excellent. sick. Well, let's have a look at some of it now, just yeah, so the viewers can get out. a handle on uh, what these guys do. Obviously you saw there, there was competitors from France, USA, New Zealand, so it's sort of like all the best from around the world. Yeah. So you'd be insane there, I mean, you'd be in good company. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's the best rides from around the world, all right. congr um, getting together. It's kind of a really social event as well, there's a lot outside the competition. What is free riding? I mean, you're saying a lot about this free riding, what is the, the difference between that and well, just free, regular? Free riding, you just sort of get down the mountain however you want, you've kind of just got to pick the best line. Uh, it's about being extreme, but you sort of got to find the hardest way to get down the hill. Right. The hardest line, but if you can pull it, that's extreme. And you may, you know, you may do way to the bottom. How do you find out you're good at something like this? Like just fall off a cliff one day and go, no, I'm bad. Oh, Reckon yeah. I could do Check that for out. a living? <laughs> no, it's just a, it's a long time doing it, you know? We've all been doing this for, <laughs> for a lot of years, so... You kind of just, some people get into racing, we got into hacking off things. Yeah, it just becomes like an everyday thing after a while. You just go out there and do what you're doing, oh, have yeah. fun. Totally. I mean, but like, how do you, the mountain is like that. How do you ski down? You just fall off it, don't you? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, edge, con vertical. edge control, you just really get to hold your line, turn, 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 jump and stick it. If is you that, you're talking you about all over. those mountains that look, I mean, from the video, it looks almost vertical? Yeah, it always kind of looks a little bit steeper than it is, yeah, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> straight's a good way of going down. OK, so would it, you guys being Australian, I mean, you, you're from New Zealand, don't yep. you, Andrew? Is it sort of hard? I mean, you guys have got a good ski season, but up, coming from Australia, is it hard? Because we don't have that good ski season. Yeah, it is, it is a little bit, little bit tougher in that sense, but you've got a lot of surfers and skateboarders, so we, you know, we get a lot of practice here. Whereas, say, in New Zealand, he might live like right near a resort and can get up there whenever he wants. Uh, have you guys ever made the, the Wide World of Sports show reel? <laughs> Cut to Grinspoon. Oh, Ripple always has like a bit of, uh, <laughs> bit of action there, for sure. Oh, excellent. Any serious injuries? Mm, no, not too bad. Well, I've had my fair share. I've done my shoulder and my knee, but I'm you know, pretty fit at the moment, so this season should be a lot of fun, for You're sure. You're still alive anyway. <laughs> Please say Nigel and Tim. Thank you. I mean, men. Men, not maniacs. Scar Tissue is the first single of uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers' new album, Californication, once again produced by Rick Rubin. And here it is. Call me old-fashioned, but... Um... Facial expressions, I quite like them. <laughs> and a lot of those people have just said sayonara to them forever. I don't know if you've seen Mary Tyler Moore recently. <laughs> We had a bit of controversy last week on Recovery. 
Um, we're always controversial, but last week we had a little bit of controversy in that um, we had some stormtroopers on from Star Wars, and apparently, like, um, the switchboard was flooded with calls about me saying that I got it all wrong and I didn't know anything about Star Wars because I was complaining that the stormtroopers weren't in the new movie and that was wrong and they should strike and try and get George Lucas. And, um, and they were saying that the stormtroopers, it predates the stormtroopers being alive. They couldn't be in the first movie because they didn't actually exist yet. I actually did know that. Uh, turns out it was just a joke. Those guys in the Star Wars suits were from the uh, Star Walking fan club, so they're the most knowledgeable people around about Star Wars. So they, they were all in on part of the joke and it was just a big joke. So I'm sorry to those Star Wars fans out there who thought that it was all just a big mess up. Um, it wasn't actually, because I knew that the Stormtroopers, I just wanted to have a joke, a little bit of a joke. <laughs> See how I'm making light of it? I'm going to make more light of sci-fi now. I thought I could just bring the thing into a whole big circle. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Audience? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! We're cooking. We're cooking. Um, so I thought I'd do more sci-fi on a more humorous slide, just to say, hey, you know, don't take it so seriously, it's just humour. And so I looked to Brisbane, of course, as you do when you look for um, comedy sci-fi stuff, and the Brisbane version of Channel 31, called Briz 31, has a television, uh, television show called Alien Television Workshop. And this is a show started up a few years ago by, let me just read the name, Lisa Lamb, Christian Matheson, Michael Lamb and Brian Dicker. Now these are four friends who came together and decided their love of sci-fi and comedy and all things crazy could go on uh, the local community station. And they did that and they have sketches, uh, you'll see that they have bands on, they have interviews with local people. They've been doing the show for a few years now and it is a great show in fact. And now you're going to see them doing their little sort of um, parody of Star Trek, which desperately needs to be parody. So here they are doing it now, that's funny. Captain's Log, Stardate 2468, who do we appreciate? Captain, we seem to have a problem with your illegitimate love child, Wesley. Wesley, you say? He's at Starfleet Academy. That's what he'd like you to believe, Captain. But he's in his room right now. I think you better go take a look. All right, Captain, is that disturbing you? Wesley, you got to a moment? What? In that packed schedule of yours, do you think there'd be a window in it? And if so, could you open the curtains up and let me look in? Yeah. Good. Now that I've got your full attention, Wesley, I've had Mr. Miracock on the phone from Starfleet Academy. He tells me you haven't attended classes all day. Sorry. There you go. Alien television. Workshop! Star Trek desperately needed to be to be sent up, I think. I went to Armageddon last week and it's one of those big comic conventions and those guys really do exist. The one who wears the guys who wear the Spock ears and girls who walk around pretending to be Spock and and quoting from Star Wars. It was quite surreal. So that was good. Good work from you guys, Alien Television Workshop. If you're in Brisbane, um, you could catch it, or in fact you could just uh, ring the ABC and just ask for it to be nationwide, because it should be. It should be a, a, a nationwide show because it's so good. Like all uh, local community stations, they put on the best shows, besides recovery. Basement Jacks are a London DJing duo who've been DJing together since 1994. Basement Jacks is actually the name of their club they run together in London. Uh, they just brought out their debut album. This is the first single off it, it's Red Alert. Freedom Concert, which is on tomorrow at the Sydney Showground and Exhibition 
complex in Homebush Bay. There are some great bands playing, including Black Alicious, Spider Bay, Your My and Regurgitator, and it's for an excellent cause. Enjoy your week. See you later. Bye. <laughs> How you going now? Good mate, how are you? Oh mate, <laughs> how did last week go with the phone? Last week, last week was help Andy and so many compassionate souls. Wow. Faxed in, look at that. That's they all great. want to help Andy because he's trying to break away from his parents because he's 32 and still lives them. And who won? Um, Rachel who said that he should move out with her because she's a good cook and it'd be good having a rock and roll star around the house. <laughs> yeah. Great. So, so that, will she be published? Um, yeah, in the next issue. In the next issue? Yes. And what competition is this week? Um, this week, Look, despite the fact that, you know, like, we were, you know, we're so vigilant and stuff, sometimes there's mistakes in Recovery Magazine. Yeah. I don't know who could believe it. Nothing like the show. No. <laughs> totally Slick polished. As, yeah. man. I tried. Yeah, even, anyway, anyway, like, on the new issue... That's, that's out, out at um, the moment? I, next week, I think. Yeah. On Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> get on down to your newsagent. And, um, like, on the c contents page, Someone, you know, Mr. Red Hot Chili Peppers doesn't have two Earls. That's an example okay. of a small mistake. So what we want you to do is um, fax in with past mistakes we might have made, and I'll give some hints. In the issue with corn in it, there was a on the quiz there could yeah. have been a mistake. Okay. And in the friends will issue that no, I'm not gonna give And there could be double issues. Yeah. And there could be mistakes that issue. I haven't even noticed. Yeah, so, so fax it in. Oh, and you win. Because today's special, I like a girling backpack. How's that? Very cool. What's With in there? With lots of stuff in it, like girling t-shirts and other t-shirts and CDs and videos and... The fax number? The fax number, 03952568839. Fax in today and we will... Mistakes in Recovery Magazine. Yes. And yes. Silver Chair. Silver Chair. We saw Silver Chair. We watched Silver Chair for the past three weeks. They've been on. We've been, Recovery's been following them around, getting exclusive behind the scenes footage. And we've got two parts, two part story today. And the first part, they're in Las Vegas. And here they are with uh, their tour around America. Thank you. Let's have a look. This is ground control to recovery two. This is ground control to recovery two. This is recovery two. Receiving your ground control. Go ahead. They're having a bit of a problem getting a signal fix. Could you look into it? Roger, roger. Ground control. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, recovery two. Appreciate that. Ground control out. Okay, let's see. Where's that fire at automatic control? Ah, oh, that should straighten it out. Damn thing. Always needs rephasing. Damn cheapo units. Bloody budget cuts. Help. Where's a can open up? Help. Gotta get out of this thing. Say anything else and just lines from the movie? Obviously not. Custard are everybody's favourite postmodern Oz Rock art folk band. They've just released a new album, guaranteed to make you laugh, make you cry, and make you shake your booty. Please put a little love in your heart for Matthew and David from Custard. Yourself. Oh. 
It's good the way you guys meet your fans. A lot of rock How superstars, don't we? <laughs> exactly. Lee, we, can we play a quick song? Yeah. You ready? ready. Okay. Can First live performance this? on the house recovery. You know the words. Come on, kids! Put your hands together! All right, kids, let's do it! <laughs> Quite busy. Okay, you ready? <laughs> Girls like that. Come on, kids! <laughs> you gotta want Girls, Girls like, like that, that don't go for guys, guys like us. I, I still wanna see, see the facts. Okay, yeah, kids. Oh, yeah, come on. But this time she's serious. <laughs> oh. Please. This is beautiful. <laughs> That's the good thing about it. It's like countdown. You just can't control you guys, yet the energy uh, captured is yeah, unbelievable. It's all energy. <laughs> See, you, you've taken the edge off my first question. <laughs> oh, I was okay. going to say, is this album better than your other ones? Yeah, this is our best one yet. <laughs> I've never been on TV before. <laughs> Yeah, you get used to it. <laughs> you recent, you've recorded in America a couple of times. Where did you record this album? Uh, yeah, it's our best one. <laughs> no, where did you record it? Oh, seriously. Yeah. Brisbane and Melbourne. Brisbane and Melbourne. Apparently Brisbane and Melbourne they recorded, which is different because they recorded others in America. How did you find that? Was that refreshing it to record at home? It was refreshing to be able to, yeah, just go home after we recorded every day, <laughs> which was good. Is there, a, you recorded in Brisbane and Melbourne? First half in October in, in Brisbane. And in November in Melbourne, so I think, yeah. Which did you like better? Uh, Both well, equal. Where are we? Oh, really? We love Melbourne, though. <laughs> There's a lot of very nice people down here. <laughs> we wear a lot of black, though. Yeah. Oh, look, but I'm fitting right in. <laughs> so I'm sort of like You've a You've got the wrong hair for Melbourne. Jeez, I'm getting fat on TV, aren't I? You can't, you, you can't be on... You guys always make a big deal out of your producers. Eric Drew Feldman was uh, on your last album. <laughs> now Magoo. How would you rate uh, Magoo? Now, you made a big deal out of Eric. What's the story on Magoo? What's the goss? What's the, the dirt goss? on Magoo? Yeah, come oh, on. I'd say Magoo's two, as good as two Eric's. He's good as two Eric's. Now, you said that Eric was large oh, look, and this he is ate a, a lot. Of him. Magoo there. Is, is that Magoo? Magoo on the cover I actually thought that song. was you. No. <laughs> that's not me, kids. So Magoo's, he's a handsome fellow. Hello, fella. I'm Magoo. That's Excellent. It. So he's not a big eater like Drew. You, uh, I remember you saying Drew likes tacos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eric Drew Feldman liked any food. What, did, what, what about Magoo? What does he eat? Is he, is he a sort uh, of rice man? He's pretty, he's pretty down home, sort of Brisbane. He likes the Vietnamese food. <laughs> yeah, he does <laughs> like Vietnamese food. But he's, got, he's in a very stable relationship and he's, he's very sort of reliable sort of guy. Yeah. What was his role for Custard? I mean, he's produced Regurgitator, Midnight just, Oil, all the greats. Just to really um, just let us do what we wanted to do, I think. Yeah. He, and you got, he, didn't st he didn't really try and control us too much. He just went for the... Whatever we wanted to do, he'd facilitate. Right, excellent. He did. He did have quite extensive knowledge of computers <laughs> as well, so we utilised that just a little bit on the record. Do you think there's more of a technology? No, not happening? in some weird, lifeless techno sort of way. More in like a uh, Westworld, more human than human way. Right. If you know what I mean. No. <laughs> and you think that's responsible? Is that from Magoo? He's brought that to the Yeah, I'd never used a computer recording before, and he, he just showed how easy it was and how handy it can be. But you can't say that you're not down with the new technology because you had the custard webcam going while you recorded. Yes, yes, recording. it's true. Is that the first band in the world ever to show the, uh, the, oh. the entire recording of an album I know was, live on I the know web? I was the first Australian band. <laughs> yeah. Well, the first well, Brisbane band. It yeah. was good, having... Being the what first Northern Reg, Brisbane Reg, band. <laughs> Reg the... So we did this interview yesterday about red uh, webcam and it said webcam, custard cam, you know, registered right. trademark, like reg after it. And this interviewer was going, why do you call your webcam Reginald? No. Hey, kids! <laughs> <laughs> any, that was funny. Any, any memorable moments from that? I mean, were you aware of it? Was it like Big Brother was watching? No, no, it was very small and it was often pointed away from us. So it didn't really affect us too much. Because there wasn't anyone... See, you've got these nice people manning your cameras. Could, right. See, we, don't, we didn't have that. We just had it sticking on a, on a sort of fishing rod in the corner of the room, peering down. So as soon as you move, you wouldn't see anything. So it'd be so, safe to just say you guys have the technology. Ah. You see how it all ties in? <laughs>
Excellent. <laughs> now, you guys have been doing a bit of touring overseas. What's, what's the level of awareness in places like America of custard? They hate Zero. Us. They, Zero? They hate us. You can't in fill America. a gig with custard lovers? No. Nope. Not in America. No. Nope. No. We're never going to leave here again. No. <laughs> we tried it once we got scared and we're not going outside anymore. Well, are they just freaked out by, by you guys? I think they just take too much of a lifestyle sacrifice for us to do any good anywhere else but Australia. Too much gigging and hard work. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You've relocated to Sydney as well. Yes, we have. Well, some we, of you have. 75% of what? us. Why is Paul left behind in Brisbane? He's too lazy to, to get his shit together. To, oh, oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, he's, he's no, you said he lazy. He his song to get his hits together. Like, he, he was writing most of the hits on the custard albums. Yeah. Yeah, he was so true. lazy, he didn't put any of the hits together. They left him in Brisbane. It's Sydney's more of a hit vibe. Exactly. I think of Paul Madu. Remember after World War II, there was all those um, <laughs> Japanese soldiers well, on the desert island who didn't know the war had finished? Right. That's my vibe for Paul Madu. Kind of a Lord of the Rings thing. Oh, Lord of the Flies. <laughs> no, the rings. Or the flies. <laughs> yeah, both. Uh, um, now, Duran Duran. That's what I was going to say. See how I laugh and look down? Just, you recorded on this tribute album. What yes. song did you record and why did we you We recorded it? a song called A View to a Kill by Duran Duran. Got to ask, we or real? Real. Look, I can go through the stages of it, of it if you like. See, there should be some regrowth there now. And you should see, be in puberty blues. And then, then it goes quite white, <laughs> and then it gets this sort of annoying yellow no man's land. Is that to hide his grey? I don't sure. have much grey hair. Not a, no, I won't say anything. You're too young and exciting. Please yes. thank Cuthbert. Yes, that's true! <laughs> the greatest working band in the world today. This is the album produced by his technology-ness. Magoo. Magoo for you. And this That's is the great first single off it. Have you seen this? It's man? a hit. It's a hit song, which means Paul would have had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Here it is. What does it mean? Hi, it's Sam here in Alice Springs. The big news in Alice this weekend is the Fink Desert Race. It's one of the gutsiest motor enduro races on the planet, and with 208 motorbikes and 92 cars travelling over 500 k's through some of the most spectacular red sand hill country, it'll be an enthralling weekend. The race is over two days, and the competitors travel south down to Fink. They camp overnight, and they come back early the next day. So for your chance to swallow some red dirt, be down on the Fink track this weekend. Have a great weekend. See ya. The Reach Out Rural and Regional Tour is going on at the moment. It's called the Big Raw. They're going around central uh, New South Wales and today they're in Canamble, Richmond. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, sorry. Arnie was just um, playing with me. Where are you? Um, we're sitting actually here in the offices of 2WAR, which is a community radio station in Coonamble. Amazing place where they have about 45 presenters um, aged between about 11 and, and 18. It's just an incredible place. Right. Oh, you're freezing up on us at the moment. Don't worry about that. Alrighty. That's just the internet. So what's Reach Out doing today? Well, we're actually um, on a tour around rural and regional New South Wales um, to promote sort of the great things that young people are doing. And today we're here at the uh, Canamble Rodeo, which is going on. We've actually got a guy here in the radio who's the 20 times Australian champion. Oh, wow. Uh, so we're going to be getting some photos and some interviews and collect some stories and all that sort of stuff, try and jump on a few cows and a few, uh, <laughs> few horses. Beautiful. And uh, we'll then put all this back onto our website in about two weeks' time so that people can come and check out the site. And the address for that is www.reachout.asn.au. Beautiful. And where are you off to after Canamble? Um, this week we've got uh, Wellington and Cobar and Dubbo and Mingan, so we're spending most of the uh, week around the sort of Macquarie area. We actually had a bit of a funny week last week. We started off getting bogged on Sunday night, yeah. uh, which was a bit of excitement for us. Yeah. Um, and then we had some great stuff. We called into Finlay, a tiny little town just above the Murray River, and there's some amazingly great outgoing young people there at the school. So it's been a great week. Oh, great. Well, thank you, Richmond. We'll speak to you later on. Good on that you. Mate. People can go to their website. Now we're going to check out a clip by System F. It's called Out of the Blue.
right now. I'm about to shake and bend. Hello, people. Welcome to the bath for the last time in the bath. I have to do the movie reviews from somewhere else from now on. Somewhere, maybe I'll find another bath. Who will have me in their bath? Maybe you could call in if you want me in your bath. Or if you don't want me in your bath, you could call in and do that. The Mummy is what we're talking about. Of course, the bath means film review time. And we're talking about The Mummy today. Now, a, a lot of monsters have had the Hollywood revival. Werewolves in the sort of mid 80s. Vampires, late 80s, early 90s. It was inevitable. One of the powers that be, one of the creative forces behind, uh, behind Hollywood blockbusters were gonna say, hey guys, we haven't milked mummies yet for all they're worth. And so here we have a slew of mummy films about to come out. The first off the, uh, off the what would it be? The first off the, first out of the gate, would you say? Yep, the crew agrees. First out of the gate is the imaginif imaginatively titled The Mummy, starring Brendan Fraser from Encino Man. Uh, this film, it's basically it stars uh, Brendan Fraser as sort of a kind of a desert kind of Indiana Jones type guy who's uh, stumbled across a key which can open the tomb of an ancient cursed mummy. And of course, uh, him and uh, two bumbling uh, English aristocrat people, uh, one bumbling guy who says, oh, mumsy a lot, and one of those librarians who when she takes off her glasses and lets off her hair, she looks like Cindy Crawford. They get together, uh, they go, they unlock, uh, they totally disregard all the native traditions and anyone who really cares about uh, Egypt's history, unlock the, uh, Tomb, let loose the mummy. Oh my God, the mummy's loose. Now, I was expecting a big horror fest here with lots of death and blood and the mummy, but you have to wait till Russell Mulcahy's Curse of the Mummy for that. This is more Indiana Jones than Rattling Bones. That was so good, I worked that out last night, the rhyme. This is more Indiana Jones than Rattling Bones and Scares. This is more of an action adventure. In fact, it's not very scary. This kind of fits more into that Raiders of the Lost Dark serial 30s adventure style thing with Brendan Fraser running around uh, he, he basically does an Indiana Jones short of a whip, so it is very fun, now, despite the fact it goes on for a little long, and some of the effects look too digital. What's this thing with digital effects? Now they're looking, everyone used to say, oh my God, those dinosaurs look so real. Now, it just looks like digital. It all looks really digital, less digital. But despite that, uh, for those uh, young'uns who are not accustomed to plenty of uh, Indiana Jones, you'll probably love this outing, The Mummy, and enjoy the film. <laughs> They could be fascist anarchists for all I care. It still doesn't change the fact that I don't own a car. Ha <laughs> Movie enthusiasts, it doesn't stop. Not around here. Woohoo! The Mummy, as I said, how many Americans were there in ancient Egypt? I'm not sure, but there are plenty in this one. Good rollicking Indiana Jones type fun for all the family! Notting Hill, Hugh Grant plays a bumbling Englishman for once! Uh, he plays a bumbling Englishman who owns a travel store who is blown off his feet by divine intervention when he meets movie star Julia Roberts. Uh, she walks into his life, Julia Roberts plays a movie star in the film and you know, she's very good I guess as a sort of whining, pathetic movie star. She wanders into his bookshop one day, oh my god, they fall in love uh, and it all happens. The basic premise, the only hook of this film, of this romantic comedy uh, set in London, is that she's a movie star and he's not. Can he cope? Does, do movie stars go out with uh, regular people? Us regular people. Do they go out with you? Maybe they do. I guess they do. In fact, a girl, um, a girl, a fan of Luke Perry from 902 and 8 faxed a photo of herself with no clothes on and, 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 she, and he ended up marrying her, so don't take that as a hint or anything. Um, now, the thing with this movie is, it's Hugh Grant. I didn't accept the fact that she was going out with his non-famous guy, because uh, it was Hugh Grant. This film would have been a lot better, I think, with the subtle decision to cast someone else in the role of the Hugh Grant bit, because that would have made it more believable. The movie it does have its good moments, but its ultimate downfall is that it plods along too slowly, and the movie is absolutely walked away with just picked up and just walked away with by the flatmate of Hugh Grant. He provides the comic relief. Do you know what I mean? Like when Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts are having their romantic dinner, the uh, the goateed flatmate will come down in his underwear and go, got any milk? Uh, and everyone goes, ah, 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 ah. This film is screaming out to please audiences. It's saying, audiences, like me. Here's a funny bit, here's a romantic bit. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll love me. It wants to be loved. It needs to be loved. And that's one of the reasons I didn't love it so much. Let's have a look at Notting Hill. Remember that commercial? The Mr. Matey commercial? Oh, maybe some of you out there do. There you go. The latest British film which stars Hugh Grant is very, very formulaic. One of the crew members is tipping cold water on me. 
by God! I think it's acid, not cold water. Now, uh, before I go to the budget video, there was a lot of criticism last week. Thanks, Frank. You've blinded me. Um, there was a lot of criticism last week about me rubbishing Star Wars, the latest Star Wars. I love Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, but this new one just doesn't cut it. So, to put that all back, that I'm not anti-blockbuster, anti-Lucas Spielberg, the budget video for this week, the final house bath budget video, picked by my mate, the shark, is Jaws. What a great film this is. It's a great big blockbuster that was made way back in 1977, or 75, I think, before Star Wars even. And it was the first of the massive blockbusters that paved the way for films like Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back and the rest. My eye is literally killing me. Now, the shark picked that one. Now, a lot of people, a lot of viewers have been wondering what I am wearing. They've been ringing in saying, is he naked or is he wearing shorts? Tao. Now, they've been asking these questions. Is he naked or is he wearing shorts? And so I've wanted to reveal that to them. I've been trying to keep the mystery like a barrister who doesn't reveal what he's wearing under his coat. So right now, on national television, I'm going to stand up and reveal to you what I wear in the spa. For the last time, the last spa review, this is the big last one, I'm going to make it happen. All right, just be ready. This is live, so whatever happens is going to happen. I'm going to stand up. OK, let's go. On national TV, let's find out what I'm wearing. You can see I am completely naked. This is going live to air. We, I am completely naked in the spa. If you missed out on it, this is a television landmark. I can't believe I am oh, I'm just shaming myself on national television, but you saw it here first. Let's go to this. Speaking of awful, Here's whole with awful. Look at this, eh? Standing proud. <laughs> oh, our next guest needs no introduction at all. So let's just call her on. It's Judith Lucy, everyone. Let's give her a welcome. To be completely frank with you <laughs> and say so I'm not in a good mood. Oh, why? But can I? Well, I'll tell you why. Yeah. This is completely true. Um, 3 30 last night, you know how every now and then you you put your stereo up pretty loudly, you've had a couple of drinks, you dance around in your own living room and pretend you're in your own video clip. I was doing a bit of that, and of course, there was a knock on the door, and I've opened it, and it's the police. And of course, I love the fact that when you open the door, they go, it's the police. <laughs> and you think, really? I thought you were Jehovah Witnesses. Isn't that crazy? And then they've gone, you know, you were, you were playing your music too loudly. And I've gone, oh, OK, that's fine. And then they've turned to leave. And then they've gone, what's your name? And I've gone, oh, Judith Lucy, and shut the door. And I've thought, well, that's really scared me. Now that they know my name, I mean, you know, that's probably on a record somewhere, you know, my record. Like, Judith Lucy playing music too loud. Like, if I'm ever booked for murder, I reckon that's going to be the thing that makes the judge They'll go, just lock her up. So <laughs> I am in a bit of a bad mood about that. But apart from that and the fact that I'm still asleep, I'm great. Well, good morning. Good way to uh, wake you up, hopefully. Yes. To start the day. Now, you've been recording your show. Lee's going to come in in a second. He's, he was in the toilet. <laughs> He's coming oh, I in see. with your CD. Make an so, effort. I yeah. mean, you know. <laughs> well, you know, three hours of power, you, you got to release sometimes. Sure, I'm like a human laxative. I have that effect on people. They just see me and they need to go to the toilet, so that's fine. <laughs> Tell us about your new CD. Look, do I have to? Yeah. <laughs> No, you don't, because it's not here. Oh, that's good. You can tell me what you've been doing. Well, maybe I'll do that instead, because I'll, I'll be honest with you and say I've been doing an awful lot of interviews about it. And it started off with me saying, no, everyone, get out there and buy the CD. And now it's gotten to the point where I'm going, look, it's just a piece of shit, and I wouldn't buy it if I were you, <laughs> unless you've got a friend or relative you don't really like. Right. It's gotten to the point where I've actually gotten quite hysterical. Like, things are coming out of my mouth that I'm actually... I did an interview the other day where I honestly said I'm a prostitute oh. selling my CD vagina. Right. And now it's probably that, a little early in the morning for that sort of thing. Time slot, things like that. <laughs> yeah. Like this morning. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, here he comes. I'm just getting nude on national television. Oh, it turns out. That's for you. Come and sit down. I had to stand up and reveal. I was just in the bar. I do these nude. Well, the you know, you've got to do what you've got to do. This That's is beautiful. 
Can Have you already asked this? Can I ask what makes you think, OK, it's time to release a CD? I'm funny enough to release a CD. Well, look, the fact that a record company said, would you like to? <laughs> <laughs> what? It would never have occurred to me, to be honest, because generally when you think, apart from, you know, people like Martin Malloy and stuff like that, generally when you think Australian comedians' CDs, you go, hmm, Kevin Bloody Wilson. Yeah. Not that oh. I'm not a fan, <laughs> but, right. you know. But well, let's just, let's just take a look at a clip first and then we'll um, come back. Okay, okay, this is Jamiroquai with Canned Heat. Okay. Hi, this is Tony from the Party Multimedia Centre in Adelaide. This week, local Adelaide band Satire the Witch will be launching their debut CD at Flinders Uni on Sunday the 13th of July. Tickets are $5 for students and $7 for adults. Doors open at 7 and it's an all-ages event, so go support them and check them out. Have a good weekend. See you later. <laughs> Out of the bath. When we were just talking while that clip was going, I was so interested, right? Stephen Wright said that the worst thing about releasing a CD is that once you release it, you can't use that material anymore. Oh, it's just I'm out there. not going to let that stop me. <laughs> no. I'm going to be doing that stuff in the old folks' home. <laughs> now, is this all one gig? Is all the stuff on the CD one night that was recorded? Yep, yep. It was uh, recorded over a couple of nights that we sort of spliced together, so basically uh, we could get the most laughs after every joke. So not it was that a few I'm cheap in that way. Together. Two nights spliced together, yeah. Nice. Were you conscious, like, OK, these are the two nights I have to be, like, so... Oh, yeah, and let me tell Tell you, I just begged the audience before we started <laughs> recording. I just went, listen, if you've heard the jokes before, Can't if you yourselves. don't think they're funny, I don't care. <laughs> because then you can buy the CD and you can play it to your children and say, hear that really strained and <laughs> laugh in the background? That was me. <laughs> me. When do you get that fax that says, OK, you are now officially a comedian? You know, just that... Oh. How many gigs do you have to do as a comedian before you go, OK, I'm a comedian now, I think? I right. don't think I've even reached that point yet. <laughs> I, I've been doing it for 10 years, and actually only about two years ago, I suddenly stopped going, I guess I'm not going to go back to university. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I am a professional funny lady. There was always an arts degree sort of thing. Yeah. Were you a late starter? Uh, oh, 21 I started. It was the old uh, failed actor, no skills. Not that I wasn't a pretty nifty sandwich hand, I can tell you. <laughs> what I could do with a chicken schnitzel, I just don't even want to go into. That's what you said at NIDA when you said, what should I do with me? Actually, at NIDA, they told me to have an operation on my nose. But we won't, <laughs> oh, no, we won't go into didn't that. Tell Barbara that didn't no, they? Taylor's nose isn't any good. No. Oh. It's a star in this country. Well, there we go. Now, you've done, you've done basically radio, television, stand-up, theatre, everything. Any preferred? mediums? Anything you look back on? Oh, yeah, that was oh look, I'll just go where the cash is. I'll be that frank. <laughs> so, you know, I could be at a shopping centre next week. I could be wearing some kind of animal <laughs> costume. I don't care. I'll do anything. But you don't have anything you think, this is the one I'm good at? Like, OK, radio's my thing, The TV. one I'm good at? The oh, one that no. you just... Yeah, <laughs> no, no. I just... No. I just do them all and hope for the best, What really? about the late show? I mean, you were on telly. Oh, wow. I was on telly. Yeah, it's telly. <laughs> I think that. we're on telly <laughs> now. Yeah. I guess I actually do like doing the live stuff the best, really. So nice. where to it's from here? It's the roar of the crowd. <laughs> from the king of the road, where are, you to, where are you going now? Well, actually, ironically enough, because if you listen to the CD, which I guess would be a good idea if you <laughs> bought it, um, you'll hear how dreadful I am when it comes to travelling, but don't think I'm not going to get right back on that pony, so I'm doing the Montreal Festival and the Edinburgh Festival. Nice, and it's all true on the CD. Please thank Judith Lucy. <laughs> We've forgotten with all our guests. You have to, this is our last show in the house, so you have to take something you with take you. Whatever you Anything like. you want. We kind of. What are you up to, Lee? Maybe I can take <laughs> you. One of the studio <laughs> audience members? No, I'm telling you, I don't have a garden, but I'm thinking that this rake could the be rake? exactly what I'm after. That's our it's good um, that we suggested it during the clip. <laughs> <laughs> it was. That was meant to look so spontaneous <laughs> and free, and now you've ruined everything. That's it. No, we, look. You've taken the rake with you. We're, we're asking guests to take the piece of the house with them. I tell yeah. you, this is better than a sale of the century board game. It's going to go in the Channel 2 Museum. We're going to go to the clip. Let's check Triple J. You're the What's professional on? one. <laughs>
Hi there everyone, Rosie here from Triple J and I'm joined by the very famous Licky Licky Long Time. Now we've got a feature CD this week. We're, we're featuring uh, Moby, he's from New York and his new CD is called Play. It's a really good album so listen to it all this week on Triple J. Now vote for your favourite song via the scroll bar for the net 50 this evening from 6 till 10. Triple J dot ABC dot net dot AU and join myself and Justin Wilkins as uh, we count them down. And we'll also play some fantastic new music. Now Roy and HG are on Sunday from 2 till 5 so listen to them and they'll rave all about sport. Now the J Files this Thursday night at 10 o'clock with Richard Kingsmill is Neil Finn. If you've got a favourite Neil Finn track just call 1900 155 444 at 60 cents a minute and that will be a fine time. It's Thursday at 10 o'clock to 1 with Richard Kingsmill and if you're in Western Australia in a town called Geraldton Send in your demo for Triple J Unearthed. Yes, we're unearthing Geraldton WA. Just send it to GPO Box 994 in your capital city. That's one song, a bio and a photo, and you've got till June 25th. Apart from that, have a great weekend. See you later. Welcome to the last Wookaroo at the Recovery House. Spare Parts is by Sally Rogers Davids and this is a sci-fi novel and Sally's a bit of a fan. She's what they call a Trekkie in sci-fi circles, a bit of a Star Trek fan. Uh, Spare Parts is set at the end of the 21st century where Melbourne, the city, has been divided up into four classes. Classes A and B are called Skywalkers and they live in towers way above the rest of the city, while the C and D graders are called Subbies and they have to battle it out on the mean city streets. Now, Kelty is a 19-year-old C grader who's just missed out on a place at university and um, that means that she'll be stuck being a, D, a C grader for the rest of her life if she doesn't do something. The problem is, in order to become promoted up a class, she has to transplant her body. This is a new process that they've discovered at the end of the 21st century where they can transplant brains from one body to another. So it's like the ultimate facelift. I believe Sher has her researchers working on it around the clock right now. So Kelty has to have her brain transplanted into the body of another person so that she can become a space corp. And this is her only way out of the trap. So it's a very intriguing read. Sally Rogers Davidson, space, uh, Spare Parts. I recommend it. The audience is caught off guard then, so was I. Yes! <coughs> cool. The Tibetan Freedom Concert, Sunday 13th of June, which would be tomorrow, uh, that's happening in Sydney. It's four concerts held simultaneously around the world in Chicago, Amsterdam, Tokyo and Sydney to raise awareness for the Tibetan cause. Uh, has moved indoors. It was originally going to be outdoors, I believe, at the Sydney Showground and Exhibition Complex. Complex. It's actually moved indoors uh, to a venue, which I'll get back to you soon, which will be really easy because uh, we're about to talk to one of the bands who's performing at the Tibetan uh, Freedom Concert exclusively, only for recovery, right here on the couch right now. Please give it up for the living end. <laughs> Just been. Where have you come from? Uh, Wheelers Hill. Just down the road in Elwood. <laughs> um, but in, in, in other parts of the world, where have you just been? We spent um, like three months in the States and then a, a few weeks in uh, Europe, like England, Holland, and Germany. Was most of that time spent in America or? Pretty much, yep. yep. So we're, only, we're only in Europe for like two weeks or something since. Because we've been in America since February. Right. So. What tours were you doing over there? What bands were you touring with? Were you just doing shows by yourself? Uh, most of it was the Offspring tour. We right. toured with them for like uh, probably a good two months or something. Right. Did a few of our own shows, and then in Europe we played uh, a couple of gigs with Silverchair, 
and a couple of our own gigs at like little pubs and stuff. Right. What sort of inroads do you think you're making? I mean, do you, do you hear yourselves on the radio over there, or do you see a little bit of awareness happening? A little bit, all? mostly in Los Angeles, like in California. Yeah, I read a good um, review of you guys in Los Angeles. The Roxy, the Roxy was actually, yeah, yeah, it's a good gig. But something, the drum wasn't working or something. But um, it was a good. Yeah. <laughs> it's stuffed up his kick pedal. Nice. Yeah. Now, um, <laughs> so I mean, you make it. Is, do, does it feel a bit like you're starting all over again with the US gigs? Is it like, oh, sort of coming back to square one a little bit? Yeah, it was more like that last time I think when we first went over because we just played. Uh, you know, when we did the ten dates on the Warp tour, we just played absolutely no one, but. This time was a little bit more exciting because we, you know, we had a bit of airplay and we got to play our own gigs in a place like the Roxy, somewhere that I always kind of wanted to play. Yeah, right. So it's, it, yeah, it, it's sort of more, a bit more exciting now, I think. And you, are you getting people in America who are coming to see the Living End? Strictly, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thing. yeah. Nice. Yep, yeah, that they were there. Um, so, I mean, how do you keep up that enthusiasm? I mean, your songs are basically energy based. I guess if you go over there and you're something for Kate or whatever, you can, <laughs> you know, just play the sort of melancholy songs. But I mean, you guys are going to have that energy. How do you keep that up if you're playing so many shows night after night in different countries? What's the clean uh, I, think, I, think, it up? I think we're just still sort of, you know, we're just so hungry to like uh, make an impact over there. You know, we're not kind of at the stage where we're like, oh well, you know, whatever. If it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. But we're kind of like, you know, we're, we're we're really keen for it to sort of happen. So we just play our butts off each night, nice. try to impress. And is it good being? I mean, I know that you were a big fan of uh, rockabilly, etc., and or music like the Stray Cats here. But it's sort of like it's a bit more of a novelty here. Was it? How was it being in you in the US, which is sort of the centre or the home of that music? Were you seeing a lot of it more around you, and sort of feeling that culture? I think so. I think <laughs> it's, uh, well, it is. It, the culture is definitely stronger with like the Warp Tour and the Hoot Nanny Tour and stuff that that happens every year in the states, which is like got a pretty strong rockabilly kind of flavour. Really? Yeah, but um, it, it's not really that much more prominent over there than it is here. Like, there's a couple of cities where you know where we found out there's a really strong rockabilly What's kind the of following. What's the city with the strongest sort of? where it came from. Oh, probably like Nashville, you know, and right. places in Tennessee and Texas and stuff. But, you know, even places like Chicago and Seattle and stuff is still, it's like Melbourne, you know, there's still the little underground core rockabilly scene that's been there forever. Right. But um, it doesn't seem like it's a hell of a lot stronger over there than it is here. Mm. Isn't it an advantage, like if you're doing, say, a band, the, the walk tour shows and you're playing with so many other bands, isn't it an advantage being Australian? Does it make you a bit more stand an, out a little bit? Yeah, I think it's an advantage being an Australian everywhere in the world. Once everyone <laughs> finds, especially in Europe, once people find out you're not British, <laughs> and you're like, oh, we're from Australia, that, yeah, there's a huge novelty to being Australian. Everyone thinks, look, you know, we, we're cute little animals from down <laughs> under or something. Oh, you've got koalas. Yeah. yeah. The whole thing. Mm -hmm. And you spent some time in the UK as well, where you filmed a video for West End Riot. Yep. Who was, was that with the director who made a lot of Clash videos? Yeah, Don Letts. And he also played bass in Big Audio Dynamite. He was just oh, really? pretty, yeah. Yeah. Pretty fascinating guy. How did you get, how did that all come about? I don't know. Um, we found it. <laughs> I think that was just our, our manager, Ray, just kind of, uh, you know, we were sort of looking around to see who could do it. We, we wanted to do one overseas and we wanted to, you know, get obviously someone who'd done, uh, you know, some bigger bands and stuff to do it and um, sort of heard about him and, and, you know, that's kind of the ultimate for us, you know, because he did all the Clash videos. Yeah, right. The videos we really look up to, so, yeah, it was a real experience. How was he compared to just... Was it was it a more of a laid back thing? He was kind right, of eccentric, really. He was a really eccentric, yeah. like, <laughs> old Rastafari guy with dreadlocks down to his knees. Just, oh my god! Yeah, just a really amazing kind of guy with some awesome stories about. Because you know he was friends with the Clash and the Pistols and all that right. in the seventies. You know when they were starting out. Yeah, right. So he had some killer stories for right. us. What about uh, you? Did a song on the Duran Duran, which is coming out, the Duran Duran tribute album. For those of you who don't know, the whole Ben Lee, Colly Minogue thing, which is coming up soon. What song did you play on that? Girls on Film. Nice. Any reason why you chose that particular uh, one? Because it had pretty girls in it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. When, did you, when did you do that? We did that in America um, probably about a month or so ago. Just did it like in to like two days. Is it all Australian bands on that album? Yeah. Australian people? Yep. Nice. All right, so you're back here. Are you back here only to do the Tibetan Freedom Concert? Yeah, and we go we go back over to the States again next week to do... We've just got, like, a couple of radio shows in California. Yeah. And then the Warp Tour. You wouldn't happen to know the venue that the the, the, uh, uh, the concert has now moved to, has it? It's moved uh, indoors. Apparently, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. I wouldn't have a clue. Just follow the people, I guess. Yeah, because it's, it's gone from the Sydney Show Games, I think, indoors, because they're scared about the weather, so we'll find that out later. And we'll please thank the Living End for coming out. <laughs> sharing a bit of themselves. Oh, it's fantastic. Okay.
good. It's a bit of an old man, isn't it? It's pretty early. You can throw to the clip if you like. All right. Yep. Do you want me to do it now? Yep. Just, you just got to look at a cue card and just and just read off it. The living so. end, west and right. That's coming up. Check that out. <laughs> Chair. How are you guys doing? Good, thanks. Alright, alright. So we'll be uh, having the guys from Silverchair play us a few songs in just a little bit live on Extreme Radio X1075. The Tibetan Freedom Concert that I was talking about before. I didn't have my info right. I'm not that good at this job. So what I wanted to say was that the venue has moved indoors, but it hasn't moved from the showgrounds. It's just at the pavi it's inside the pavilion now, just to be safe so that there's no hassles with the weather. Other bands performing at the concert besides The Living End, who are just here, include Regurgitator, Neil Finn, Spider Bait, The Avalanches, Eskimo Joe, Splendid, Splendid UMI, Girling, Not From There, Trans Am, Jebediah, uh, Celibate Rifles, The Mavises, Black Alicious, the list goes on. It's so worth it to go, and you should. Helen Neville is the star of the new Australian film Sally Marshall is Not an Alien. It's a bit of a, a, a strange film for Australia. It's sort of aimed at a younger audience. We don't do that much, and we should. So please welcome Helen Neville to prove why Sally Marshall is not an alien. How are you, Helen? Good, thanks. Yep. Tell us about the movie. What's okay. it all about? Okay, um, well, it's about um, this girl called Sally Marshall. And everyone thinks that she's an alien, right. and I think she's not because she's the new girl. She's the new girl yeah. on the block, yeah, yeah. yeah. And because she's really weird, like she hangs upside down and reads books, and you know, she's just really weird, you know. And um, so it's about me trying to prove that she's not an alien, and I make a bet with this girl, and in the end, I actually become really good friends with her, and then something really surprising happens. Okay. I'm not going to tell you. Oh, we won't reveal it. Yep. Like, is, is, do you think that this film's like reflective of real life kids who sort of pick on the new person? Oh, and... totally. Yeah, it's like, it's got real morals in it. It's sort of like, you know, don't treat people for what they've seen because you, you never know what's going to happen. You, do, right. you don't know how things will turn out. It's so. very metaphorical. Yeah, like, you can, <laughs> it's a family film, you know, can, you can have it as a a child's film, you can take it as the adventure, or you can have it as an adult's film and sort of take the morals out yeah. of it to, you know, a deeper dimension. You should be the film's so. publicist. Oh, You're yeah. doing real. Let's have a look at it anyway. Here's a little bit of Sally Marshall, who's not an alien. Yeah, what your kind around here? Go back to your own planet. Hey! Just leave my friend alone, all right? Alien lover. Fully. Do you know what her old man does? He kidnaps kids and drills into their brains. If they have one, so don't worry, you should be safe. Then he turns them into aliens. You could be next. Maybe you're one already. Mm. <laughs> Laugh while you can, Pipsqueak. Cause Sunday you're finished. You and the alien. <laughs> oh my god. That bully was stomped all over me when I was a kid. So was it gruelling shooting a film? Was it everyone says, oh, it's just the most glamorous life? No, 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 no. <laughs> um, no, waking up at, you know, 4.30 in the morning and coming home at 7.30 and reading it out, like your lines for an hour, then you have to go to bed at 8.30 or else you have bags under your eyes the next day. <laughs> Seven days a week? Yeah. Oh, no, five days a week. Five days. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. There's good food on it, so that's... We work seven days here. Really? To bring this oh, home gosh. to you. Seven days, 24 hours. Now, Okay, so how long have you been acting for? Um, since the, about the end of 97, professionally. Right. Since the end of 97, I did um, something called Blood Mouth and Sticky Beak. Right. With um, Kane McNay, who's coming on later. Oh, yeah. from Sea Change, yeah. what a link. Yeah, See how I know. you tied yeah. it all together. And um, then I went, about two weeks after that, I went on to the movie, and then from then I've just been doing schoolwork. Really? Stuff, yeah. So you wouldn't, if it got really big, you wouldn't drop out of school to pursue the acting? No. The big bucks. No, I want to be a scientist. Oh, really? Is yeah. that what you really want to do? Oh, I love being a scientist, but I want to be an actor as well. An actor scientist? Yeah, an actor scientist. You, actor scientist. you could be both. You, end up, you ended up becoming best friends with a girl who plays like yeah, your worst enemy. Yeah, yeah. Well, what happened was, because my mum works full time, so just my dad, I had to live in Adelaide with the nanny and um, Thea, who was the bully in it, and we got across to each other sometimes, but we just had a sisterly relationship and we became best friends. Excellent. Yeah. Can we all please thank Helen Neville? Thank you. Great stuff. Yeah. Very good stuff.
You can take a piece of the house with you. I forgot I to say it nearly take again. This boy George. Oh, boy back. George! I love him. You really, you're going to take boy George. I'm what sorry. about this fabulous? No, pink I love boy George. Cushion. I'm sorry. It's great. It's fluffy. I love him. All right, him. you can take him. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Smash Mouth formed in San Jose, California, and uh, they chilled with Sugar Ray, Third Eye Blind, and they had a hit a few years ago, and uh, with a song, what was the name of the Smash Mouth song? Oh, Walking, on the sun. Walking, Walking on the Sun. Walking on the Sun. Was, that on, was it on the sun? Yeah, Walking yeah, yeah, on yeah, the yeah. Sun. Yeah, 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 that was it. Yeah, they had it yeah. with that, and now they're back. This is uh, All Star. Got a problem? I'll be back. Okay. How good was that? Terminator kills a guy from Blink 182. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Well, that's you did beautiful. Really. He's cute, isn't he? Yeah, that's so much effort. The Blink 182 competition has been running for a fortnight now. Yep. And um, it was to ask, oh, we wanted you to send in what were they missing in their clip? What's my age? What were they lacking in their film clips? Yes, and the winner, we are here to announce the winner. These are the runner runners up. The winner of the competition is Danielle from Sindel. Yes! Go. In Victoria. Congratulations, So these Danielle. aren't even the winners? No, we're not showing the winner because she was too creative for us. Right. But uh, we couldn't bring it in today. But Danielle, you know who you are and thank you for your wonderfully creative submission. Nice. You won the big prizes. Where are the big prizes? They're oh, right here. they're all over the The skateboard, the big block mount, the signed undies, the, the <laughs> signed CD, everything. And um, the runners up are all here and that will they will be notified soon. Sandra Barn, Andrew McRae, Philippa Malone, Despina and Eloise and Amanda. So congratulations on behalf of Lee, Annie and I. Before we saw part one of the Silver Chair um, story the, of them touring around America. We've got part two now coming up. Let's take a look at that. Woohoo! Just reading the latest recovery mag. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo. <laughs> it's new. It's fresh. fresh. It's pink. Is that fresh spelt with a PH? Yeah, man. Fresh. Like fat? <laughs> yeah, it's fat, fresh, and funky. Yo. With a PH. Yo. What's up? What's happening? Well, today we were giving away this beautiful girling bag full of CDs and stuff to the person. It's an official sent. girling bag. Oh yeah. My God. Oh my God. Imagine, how's that for accessorising? And it's got T-shirts and stuff. And... Has it got girling stuff in it or anything? Yeah, stuff? yeah. It's got lots of other stuff and girling stuff. Well, show, yeah, show. Right. Is this what you're giving away as the prize? Yeah, for today, if you send in a mistake that you see in a recovery magazine, which, so good. let's face it, isn't that hard. There's okay. a CD holder. So, OK, well, to win this, what do you need to do? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Um, send in your mistake to, <laughs> that you found in recovery magazine. Any mistake you found. Yeah, and I'm sure it wouldn't be in any of your articles, Lee. Look, cities. And um, we've got some good ones. I wrote an article, that's a mistake. <laughs> and it got published. There was, did you know that there was two issue fours? That's pretty funny, isn't it? That's a mistake. This mosh person has sent it. And also, we had a mini crossword and had the word awful instead of awful. So anyway, we're getting those that's mistakes. A mistake. So if you send in recovery, if you fax them into us on. 039525-68-39. And you'll you will get all that, the all the stuff. Oh. Thanks, Nelly. <laughs> Eminem is not a um, brand of chocolate anymore. Now he's like this famous rapper guy. And uh, his, the first single off his debut album, which is the Slim Shady EP is, LP, sorry, is My Name Is. You might have heard it, but here it is again.
My daughter is being attacked by a dragon. You must save her. To achieve, you must believe. of Sea Change burst onto the TV screen at about um, sometime last year and it was so popular that it was been it has been played twice since then. It's back with its second series and we're going to talk to two of the stars from the show. Uh, Cameron Nugent who plays Craig Jelly and Kane McKay who plays Rupert Gibson. Let's give him a clap. <laughs> Hey guys, Kane and Cameron. No, that's nice and cozy. I just have to swallow my chewing gum. Sorry, you swallowed it. Yeah, there's like. I just have to swallow. I, I know it like stays there for years and years. They say, but I just have to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> the audience will forgive you. Thank you. Yeah. Sea change. Could you just give us a recap of the story for viewers who might not be aware of it? Kane can do that. Kane, oh, okay. Kane, you can do it for us. Okay. Well, uh, it starts off. Uh, my mum, Sigrid Thornton, is sort of a big shot sort of lawyer in the city, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Everything is going great for her, except she doesn't pay any attention to her kids. That's uh, me and Cassandra McGrath. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, anyway, she finds out that her husband's been having an affair with her sister. Right. And sort of everything goes tumbling down. And so uh, she decides to sort of get away and move to Bowen Heads. It's a sort of place that's far away from the city. Uh-huh. Pill, Pill Bay. Pill Bay. Pill Bay. Pill Bay. Yeah. It's not Bowen Heads, it's is it? Yeah, Pill Bay. Oh, yeah. oh. And <laughs> Looks like you, Bowen Heads, you though. You just gave away that. It's not. So, you're Rupert? Yes. And you're Craig? Craig, yeah. And um, how do your... What, who are your two characters? Give us a breakdown of them. Oh, my character's... Okay. Um, I'm the son of, of, of the, the... He's sort of... He's the town real estate agent, but he's also the, the president of, of certain clubs and he tries to run, basically run the town. And I'm his son. He's his dad. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just sort of a happy-go-lucky, surfy come mother's son sort of son. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a father's son, but it actually it, it involves that, that I become more of a mother's son than a, than a father's son. And it's to his disappointment, but I think it's to the betterment of the character. Right. So, I think to, we've got to it. To the betterment oh, the of the character. What about Rupert? <laughs> um, Rupert's a sort of funny looking kid. He sort of doesn't... He has a couple of friends, but he sort of... He finds it a bit hard. He's, he's fairly smart. He's mm -hmm. nobody's fool. Um, I don't know, he just sort of... It's like a country western song. Well, that was, what, that, that, what was, that, that's, that was in the synopsis. Well, oh, we're about that, to take a look oh, at some listen. footage, but... Um, and Rupert's running away from something. We'll just have a look and we'll come back to that. <laughs> so, what was Rupert running away from there, Kane? Ah, uh, well, his mum and dad had actually been arguing about whether they should get back together or not, because sort of that's what she went away for. Right. And so Rupert thought, well, if she went away, they can have time to sort of sit down and talk about it by themselves. So, so that's what you did? Yeah. Or Rupert did? Rupert. Are you guys yeah. are good buddies on and off screen? Yeah, yeah, we get along yeah. pretty well. Yeah. yeah? Yeah? Everyone, everyone, like, everyone, the younger cast got on pretty well. Not that we didn't get on with the older guys, but we just tended more to, to hang on the beach or where, whatever we're doing, yeah. play frisbee or... Well, you guys, uh, on the young um, point, how did you guys get into acting? Well, for me, <laughs> my uncle knew a lady who worked for the ABC um, and they, they'd come over my place a couple of times and had a bit of a chat and she heard about a, a short film that was going on for the ABC mm -hmm. called It Never Rains. And she knew that I that did a, a couple of short plays at school mm -hmm. and um, she knew how I liked acting so she asked me to, to audition for it and I went along and got it the part. And, and there you so, go. Yep. And Rhonda Johnson was her name. Oh, Rhonda. Uh, Rhonda Johnson. Thanks, Rhonda. <laughs> and me, well, mine was an uncle as well. My uncle um, worked for Channel something not two years ago. <laughs> and um, Good old ABC. And I didn't add and then it just sort of went from there and I'd just been doing things during school and on the way 
you know, just having fun. Yep. And the second series is starting soon. June yeah. the 27th, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah, I've awesome. got them. Hey, they like, just hey, said, hey. how are you? <laughs> Bro? Hey, 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 Cameron. Hey, Cameron. <laughs> they said, do you want to go in and ask a question? So I said, yep. <laughs> so how's <laughs> sea change going? <laughs> <laughs> what about the success of sea change? Are you surprised or...? Um, not with people like Sigurd in it and mm. Dave Wenham and John Howard and Kerry Armstrong and all those other people. Is he gone now, Dave? Oh, we can't say much, but he could be back. He could be back. Could be back. Could be Kerry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. There could be something in there for him. Turns but, um, out the mother killed him, I heard. Oh. Well, I was oh, the butler. Hey. The butler. Just give away the whole thing, like. I am your father, Cameron. <laughs> I've heard That's he's been so doing. Awesome. He's been doing a Star Wars. I haven't seen it. I am probably the only person in the world who's never seen any of the Star Wars. You've series. never seen any. Any. Nah. Empire Strikes, Strikes Back, Star Wars, or the, the one the with Jedi? the Ewoks? Nah. Yeah, the Muppets. Nah, never seen any of them. That's and I think fun. I'm going to wait till the first three come out and see them all in order, and I'll probably be the only person to have done that. Well, probably. I figure, yeah. I figure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was still born when, they, when it came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. But, was, like, it's to most people's it's surprise. That you haven't yeah. seen any of them. It's pretty weird. It's pretty weird. We should get off Star Wars. Yes, OK. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let me just tell everyone when Sea Change is back on. On Sunday night, on June the 27th, that's when the second series begins. And that's when you can see Rupert, aka Kane, and Cameron, aka Give us Crane. A secret. Tell us something that happens in the show. Come on, come on. Give something that happens. Something, something happens. Something ABC. We're all brothers. Uh, okay, you'll see water. You'll see water, uh, and you'll uh, you'll definitely see Sigrid. And Love romance. You'll see romance. Romance. Um, oh, there's there's a bit of romance. You're not going to take it seriously. Ah, no, no there's yeah, a bit of romance. Yeah. <laughs> romance. Now, there's a little bit going on. It's good. It's it's a lot of people thought that with the second series and and the script would be hard to keep up, but I think they've. They've proven that come back stronger. Yeah, I yeah. think they've done just as well, yeah. if not better than yeah. the first. It's like the Godfather it's Part Two. It's better the second time around. Yes, <laughs> Godfather. Now I've seen those. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's punk. Or something like the House Ooh. Recovery, hey? Yeah, <laughs> we're leaving. Do you want oh, to pick yeah. something from the something house? From here? You can have it. Something, something from the house. Yeah. Okay. Just I have my eye on that little thing. I don't know what it is. I think it's a snow what? shaker. That. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, but you can't have the Terminator man. I'll take it. Oh, the Terminator man. Oh no, no. Anything but Terminator. Stop. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take this, I'll take this. Oh, no, I'll Mr. take this. Anything but the kiss. Mr. Anything Mr. but that, bro. Oh, you can have anything but the cushion. Oh. Uh, Seriously. I'll take... I'll take... Boof. Boof. Take you sure you don't want something else? Because... Boof. Boof. <laughs> I was going to get that. It's like the it's it. clip. It's called Kaling, and it's very interesting because we've got the producer sitting right next to us here, lovely wow. Lee Winnell, put it together. There's also an all-ages crawl underneath. Yes. And um, tour dates, because they're coming... They're here. They're here, and they're here next week as well. Their manager sent me like a hundred tapes of them playing live, and I made it, the clip. Oh, let's thank Kane. <laughs> let's thank Kane. Oh, these guys are better. <laughs> Thanks Go. for coming in, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Sunday 11th of July, the 1999 Youth Expo is on, showcasing diversity in contemporary youth culture interests, featuring extreme sports demos like the snowboarding guys, fashion like uh, Arlene Texter Queen, music like Custard and Living End, technology like the internet crosses, and multimedia like the internet crosses. See, all the things that are on recovery are at this thing. The proceeds go to the Starlight Foundation. It's at the Howie Complex. R-A-S, it says. Oh, it's at the Howie Complex, R-A-S, in Homebush. And you can contact it by going www.youthexpo.com.au. www.youthexpo.com.au. BIS are a Glaswegian electro-pop group. You might remember them from a couple of years back when they had a bit of a hit album. And they came on recovery and played Starbright uh, Boy for us, which was nice. Now they're back with this album, Social Dancing. And we'd like to welcome them in and ask them how they've been since their last visit. Please welcome this. Stephen and John. Yeah. Stephen and John. Yeah. Yeah. Missing one. Amanda? Yeah, she has. 
She sounds like the guy at South Park with no voice. So oh like, my god, like, I had this really fun. good question for her. This oh, well, is, I'll ask you yeah, to pass it on. You yeah. can answer for her. Uh -huh. Okay, so what are the main differences uh, for Biss between this album and your last album? Um, oh. This one's better. It is, <laughs> for a start. Yeah. It's, uh, really? No, yeah, it's just kind of we had more time to work on it and we've, we've become better songwriters and, and yeah. just the whole sound is much more kind of what we try to achieve. It's with mature, every other yeah. It's mature, but not. Not adult. It's not yeah, adult. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you've, you've, you're like a fine wine. Yeah, you've yeah. only gotten better with age. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, um, okay, so you recorded this and you were here a few years ago with yep. your other album, and they both they do both sort of have that a bit of sort of electronic pop vibe. Yeah. How important is technology to what you guys do? Oh, it's very important, especially with this album. You know, we kind of just we explored it all really and had time to just kind of expand our sound electronically. So it's yep. great fun, and it also ma makes just for weird music as well. Yeah. You know, instead of just the standard guitar thing. But it's like a thing. I mean, the music is it, it, it is in that way. It sort of polarizes audiences, I guess. You yeah. could you could yeah. either be um, you know you're really into it, and then there's people who don't understand that oh. electronic pop crossover yeah. thing that you guys are doing. The new thing. They're not into new music. They want the old. What do you think about that? Just that ability to split audiences down the middle. Yeah, it's cool. We've always done that. You know, yeah. Right back in the day, like three, just four when you were performing ago. live. Just way in back. Britain when we like first, you know, kicked off it was like totally split you know it's like really because we were really young when we started and we had this you know it's really unique sound i suppose to a lot of people it seemed natural to us but a lot of people didn't understand it and right. that's cool you know i think it's you know if you don't upset anybody you're doing the wrong thing yeah exactly what do you think about that sort of fickle attitude of the english press just the way they pick something and say oh this is the thing and of course that's not mm -hmm. i mean yeah. well i mean they're world renowned for it now yeah, you know? it's <laughs> like everyone else in every other country you go to says oh the english press Bit of a joke, isn't it? Really? <laughs> so it is. I mean, we just don't take it seriously anymore. It's cool. No, <laughs> we have a laugh. Good. Is it good though to be able to? I mean, a lot of those sort of people, uh, especially with a debut hit mm -hmm. album from a young band, would be like, "Ah, oh, one hit wonders." Is yeah. it good to come back with another successful album and say, "Well, there oh, you definitely, go." Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, especially with this record, we've done, we've been a lot more places already. We're doing a lot better in you know Europe over here and stuff, and it's great to get around the world again. And, uh, right. and just yeah, it's it's not just to prove people wrong, but it's certainly. It's, a, it's sweet. <laughs> you're lucky, you're lucky. Now you've got Andy Gill yep. to produce this album, who was a member of uh, English, uh, what well, the English art oh, yeah. rock yep. band, uh, Gang of Four. Gang of That's Four. the one, Gang yeah. of Four, great band. Why, how did you get him? Did he ask you, did you ask him? Yeah, we just sort of, uh, we worked in similar circles and just, we, we, we never really worked with producers because we're right. very much a sort of tight unit, we produce ourselves, but we thought we'd give it a go and Andy Gill was really good, you know, he'd, He'd, he'd been working with people like the Jesus Lizard and he'd worked with Michael Hutchins and his stuff before. Uh, and and it was just, uh, I don't know, it just seemed to work out really well. You yeah. know, he brought out the best in us, you know, made us work hard for a good record. But I mean, they have two very different, like Gang of Four is obviously very different to Beast. Did yeah. he bring anything out there? Or I think, he, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a guitarist, you know, he's been in the band, he's done the kind of, the band thing. So it's good to have someone who's, who, you know, has similar thoughts to us in terms of, making a record, you know, and he did play some guitar on it, it was quite yeah. bit of an honour, you know. Yeah, he's played on a record, yeah. played all the guitars. Really? <laughs> oh, no. well, not all of them. Not quite, just all the bad ones. Now, one <laughs> place where you guys are definitely, definitely popular, I've heard, is Japan. Mm. Yeah, is it true, I, I just want to clarify whether this is a rumour or true, that you cause riots there? <laughs> Uh, well, we'd like to cause more riots there, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, there's only there's only so many riots we can fit into. You know what I mean? Yeah. What a day! Too yeah. much troublemakers. I mean, yeah. why do you think that is? Is it just? I, th I don't know. I think it's like it's something about our appeal. I think they're kind of, uh, you know, the first album kind of hit the moment sort of thing. Right. You know, it, like they they love the sleeve artwork. We had a big hit single off it and stuff, and you know we had we've got our own watch and stuff like that. Amanda, there, uh, who's not here, yes. she. Draws a comic strip. Yeah, she, yeah, she, she did a while ago. Yeah, I don't know she does it anymore actually, but it was kind of, you know, the story of Bess. It was kind of like, um, oh really? In that uh, manga style. Yeah. <laughs> does she do a lot of the artwork for you yeah, guys? Yeah, she does all the artwork and stuff. That's something she. All the little pictures. There's sort of none on the cover here, yes. but usually you'd have all the little Biss stuff. Yeah, 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 and everything. Yeah. Do you guys do other things, obviously, outside the band as well? Oh, like nothing man? at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dull. <laughs> no, we play football. We we make our own records. We yeah. have a record label and all that. So we. We're always doing stuff. And, uh, we have never... plans for the special empire, you know, yeah. kind of uh, <laughs> nice. taking over, but you know, it's just not happening at the moment. Oh, so it will. We're it working will, on it. Will. Yeah, we're working. It on will. It. It'll start right here. Can we please thank Biss? Yes. Well, two thirds on. <laughs> two thirds. Great stuff. Well, first single from this, a bit of a radio hit right here in Australia. Yeah. Is action and drama, and here it is. The guys in action.
ask Bess if they'd like to take something from the house because we're moving today. Oh, oh nice. boys! Oh, I think we have to take. I'm sorry, we have to take the pink star because she's not well. Yeah, okay. Amanda. She can Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Do you want your CD? I'd like to have a CD. You can take yours if you like for free. Thanks, Bess. We're now going to have a chat to Dylan. I'm not sure if you know him. Um, he's coming back with a show called um, 10.30 Slot. Let's have a chat to him. No one's ever How said that to me before. It's, it's nice. It's I know. all surreal. You're on the other side now. Ah, I don't have to do anything. No yeah. research. No, I, I know everything about you. Oh, How are those tonsils going? Thing. Oh, you know about the tonsils. <laughs> what have you been doing? Everyone's been missing you. I've been very, very busy, working hard, um, sleeping in on Saturday mornings. Yeah, well, you know. Um, and whereupon I get up and then watch recovery, of course, mm -hmm. after sleeping until 9.30 or something, which is good for me. And I've got a new dog and... Um, um, Shui? Shui. She's, she's so cute. Yeah, she is. I nearly yeah. brought her in, but, you know, kids and animals. Yeah, and, and the fluff. She might... The fluff. She would have barked at the fluff. Yeah. <laughs> Fluff's manic. It's just flying around There's everywhere. a lot of fluff. The pink fluff is overwhelming in the morning. I know. And the band, my band's been doing gigs and touring and recording the Brown Hornet stuff. Woo! We've got one fan! One whistle! We've <laughs> got one whistle. Yes! <laughs> Get Bruh. on the CD. Dude. Bruh. Yeah, and um, and we've been preparing the new show as well. The new show? What mm. is the new show? Well, it's an exciting thing. It's going to be an evening one, which means there's um, no censorship, which is very exciting huh. for um, some people. Not me, because I'm very polite and I have manners, because mm -hmm. my mum brought me up good and stuff. And um, and it's going to be very rock and roll, live bands. There'll be uh, six about six electric acts and a couple of acoustic ones every show. An hour and a half, mm -hmm. start at 10.30, go to midnight, so it'll go this, which will be called... You ready? Yep. The 10.30 Slot! Beautiful. Yeah. Did you think of that all by yourself? No, no, no. I thought of lots of other ones and they said no to all those. <laughs> so they kept it as... I wanted to call it... The Sign of the Cow! <laughs> didn't go down too no, well. No, no, that's the sign of the cow. So it's a rock thing. Much like your hair? Indeed. And um, what about, the, where's the enforcer? What's he, is he going to be with you as well? I hope so. Yeah? We, we shall see. That's I good. need the enforcer there to at least make my cups of tea in the evenings. Yeah, and... Uh, Massage. Yes, that's right. We saw you during the series, this series. Um, mm. Piano, Yeah, dancing. he's there for my piano training as mm -hmm. well and some dance training. Bouncer. Too. Yeah, he's a bouncer, a bodyguard. He's there for me always. Like, he was a man Saturday, but I guess at last he can be a man Friday, which is what he was supposed to be. Right. Mm. <laughs> and, and the new recovery, let me tell you about the new recovery that's starting in six weeks. So it's all changing? It is. All right. Well, it's got a different slant. Okay. We're going to be coming from all around Australia. Yummy. As opposed to one place. Mm -hmm. And, um... What else can I tell you about it? It's kind of a lot of feel stories. Mm. We're going to have animated friends. Animated friends. Mm. We've got the little the little breakers that you've been seeing. Are you saying that you and Lee are not animated? <laughs> no, I'm actually in the flesh. But you're very right. highly animated characters. I, I like to think so. And actually, Texter Queen's been drawing some really good animations of uh, of us all week, oh, all day. Texter sorry. Queen. Go yeah. see Texter Queen. <laughs> She's drawing. What are you drawing at the moment? Can we have a look? It's to show everyone what this is, Dylan. Beautiful. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that amazing? Go seek Texter Queen. Isn't she talented? Very talented. And the Crayolas? Good to see. Oh, I don't endorse any Crayolas. Yeah, we're on oh, the okay. ABC. That's cool. No <laughs> worries. Unless they want me to. No worries. What's Angus doing there? Angus, is what are you doing? Um, uh, I'm actually overseas in Denmark. I've been uh, sent away from my foul mouth and uh, for some reason they strangely uh, accepted me with open arms. 
Uh, Denmark's digging Angus. Yeah, well, Dylan and I were over here. We were just getting a get-to-know-each-other camp. Right. Where we, uh, We've been preparing for the show in great detail by having these camps in various places throughout Europe. And <laughs> Denmark, you know, the, I just got back from there recently and we were having a great time. Is Olga still there? Yes, yes. She's, I, I'm, I don't actually Crazy understand guy. what she's saying, but uh, <laughs> she seems to like the fact that I have a Twitch at about 7.30 every Thursday morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm right. not sure what uh, I'm not sure what that um, when she speaks to me and actually wipes that thing off my nose every Thursday means, but uh, I don't actually have anything on my nose. So, uh, what's she talking about? No, well, that's what they do here idea. in Denmark. Thanks, Angus. Yeah. Well, uh, well Angus, Angus is going to be on the new show with me. That's why we've been hey, having Angus. more the getting there, to know sessions. Hey, hey, what's leading in Denmark? Denmark? Oh, Lee. 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 Lee's, um, <laughs> He's not coming on the Getting to Know You cams, <laughs> Wendell. Thanks. Thanks, Angus. We'll be watching you on ten, at 10.30, on the 10.30 slot. The slot. The slot. The slot as it will be known as after a while. Thank you, Dylan, for Thank sitting on the other side. Me. This is so bizarre. <laughs> It's all complete the And we're matching too. I know. We're matched. We're going to check out, uh, check out a clip by Valentin now. Oh. That's right, isn't it, Lewis? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what else? Where? You've got to take something from the house. You've got oh, to yeah. turn it, Janelle. Really? You can have any gift. Anything? You can yeah. take it with you. A studio audience member. I would like a Winnell. Oh, that's just metal. <laughs> Something's uh, broken. Uh, it's my radio mic. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I do with you? Take me outside. Previously on Private Muscle. This is one spooky pad. Just a rich turkey with bad taste, man. If this cat was rich, he would have paid his bills. Ah. And now, let's boogie. About time you cats showed up. Turkey. I want to suck your blood, man. Darth Maul is in the house in the form of Dylan Lewis. He showed my undies on television. My undies were on television. Because of Lewis. He's wanting to be putting my undies on television for ages. I just wanted to do a little roundup. The Flogging with Lee guys who were meant to be on, they being Craig Anderson and Brian Moses, who made this brilliant film called Life in a Datsun about a, a, a Datsun that doesn't work and it's really crappy. They couldn't make it. They were coming down from Sydney, and guess what? I think it was Sydney, and they missed their flight. You know why? Because their car broke down. Oh, well. See, if that was American television, I would have... Yeah, the car broke down. Maybe it was the Datsun. But anyway, sorry guys, they were here to promote not only their film life in a Datsun, but also the Shootout Film Festival. Uh, the success stories of Flogging with Lee have been huge, including this guy, Adrian Papworth, who made the animation called Grounded. He, he won an award at the Skittle Film Festival. Congratulations, Adrian, you're an absolute legend. Arlene, text the queen. Should I have a word? Arlene, come in. You've been drawing pictures. Had a clap. <laughs> Arlene, text the queen. Look at all these pictures. How long have you been doing this stuff for? I've Texter, been... why texters? Uh... Four questions in one. <laughs> why texters? I've been doing it for about two years and I like texters because I've always used them since I was little. And I've, I like started doing it because I didn't like being a passive pa person in the audience. I like to... Get up there yeah, and be a... known. Ready You're doing this all over things. our house. These are everywhere. This is Ace. You're the best, Texter Queen. Thank you very much. Thanks, Texter Queen. <laughs> You can catch her art sometime soon. <sighs> French uh, guy, DJ man, Quentin du Dupay, uh, otherwise known as Mr. Wazo, is a good guy. He's a good guy. And he's got a song called Flat Beat. This is the short version. The shortened version, so don't get excited. Thanks for coming on a Thanks, tour. Thanks, um, We're coming to return soon. Coming to you from around the country. There'll be more animations, more clips. 
More field stories. Um, for the next two weeks, you'll have J-Files, then Then go. the surprise for four weeks. Four recovery specials with a surprise package to be announced. It'll and be we'll, exciting. we'll find a place to live by then, hopefully. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to Darth and uh, Angus and for being a good... He's closing the door on us. But, yeah, but thanks. <laughs> I, uh, I'm sure uh, Charles then can uh, find something for <laughs> Yeah, I heard they're bringing back young child time. All right, see you later. Thanks for having us in the house. Um, what else do we need to say? Yeah, that we've got... We said J-Files. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, um... <laughs> thanks, audience! Be nice you you watching us and, um... Bye! And, yeah, thanks for having us. And thanks, Shake and Bake, for playing good music. See you, too. And Bye! And see you, See ya! <laughs> Bye! Um... Taxi! Bye! Bye! Come on, Lee. Let's go. Bye. Let's start hitching. Where should we go? Hitch. I don't know.